Have you ever seen a ghost? Would you know what to do if you saw one? I did. And that ghost changed my life. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, guests, welcome. And I'd like to share a story with you. It was May 2nd, 2005. There's two significant dates. I got a call. I was at work. I got a call from a, a client. And his words were, Debbie, what do I have to do or say to make you move to South Africa for me for one year? I didn't know the answer to that. And for the next couple of weeks, I tried everything not to go. Life was changing for me at work and my family, my, my sons were growing up and growing away. Uh, I had one in the Air Force in, in Japan. And my marriage was failing and I knew if I was not there, here, that life would change for me. But every door that I tried to go through to stay closed and locked tight. So I reluctantly went. Two weeks later, I arrived after a 29-hour flight to Port Elizabeth, South Africa. When I stepped off the plane, the plane was parked a ways from the airport and I had to walk up. When I stepped off the plane, it had a eerie familiarity about it. Like I'd seen the mountains before, I could smell the red earth just as well then as I am standing here now. I could feel the, wind, the raging winds coming off the sea as I headed toward the airport to collect my luggage, thinking, this must be what it's like to have jet lag. I collected my luggage and took a taxi to my hotel. Two weeks later, it was early in the morning, May 16th, 2005. I awoke early. I went to the window, and I looked out over Mandela Bay. The Indian Sea is probably one of the most beautiful seas I've ever seen. It's a combination of sapphires and azure blue, and it was still just as still as it could be. Looking beyond, because the bay faces the east, I could see the sun beginning to come from being immersed into the sea. I could see the reds and the orange and the yellows as if it was burning a hole in the sea to gain claim for that day. As it did, I couldn't look at the light anymore, and I turned, watching the light, the reds and the yellows and the oranges fill my darkened room. And as I turned, there was a mirror on one side of the wall. And there was a shadow appearing in the mirror. And I froze. And the shadow moved. And as I stood there, and the light became brighter and brighter and brighter in the room, this shadow became more and more visible. And soon, we were staring at each other. How long her neck was, and her eyes pierced my soul. We must, I felt like I stood there staring it at her for years. I didn't know who she was. I was just taken that there was something or someone in my room. Thinking I was still dreaming, I looked toward my bed and realized that for the first time in years, I had slept the entire night without waking. 
I used to spend endless hours up during the night. I couldn't sleep through stress and problems. I would read, I would pace, but this night was different. I had slept all night. And when I looked back, thinking that this image was gone, the image was still there, staring back at me. <coughs> then I realized that image was me. And I had not seen me for over 40 years. I had tucked me away from a childhood tragedy and kept her safe. And for whatever the reason at that time, she chose to show herself that day. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know why that it, she appeared to me that day. But as I dressed for the day and drove myself to work on the other side of the car, on the other side of the road, she came along. And for the next couple of months, as I begin to do my speeches, I would like to share with you the journey for I had yet to discover the reason for her arrival that day and the strength that she would give me to carry me forward through the last couple of years. Mr. Toastmasters.